Isabel Berzazzi is a 19-year-old student at Concordia University in Montreal. She's looking for a summer job right now to help pay for next year's tuition and rent. But so far, no luck. I have applied from everything like restaurant jobs, retail, like outdoor manual labor type jobs, office jobs. I've really been through them all. So I definitely started more with the things I was interested in, things that I thought that I would excel in. Um, But as time went by, I was like, okay, maybe I have to look at more options because clearly the ones that I'm a little bit more keen on are not working out the best. 17-year-old Diego Quadra is also frustrated. He's applied to dozens of jobs in Toronto this summer and nothing. Originally, I was looking more towards like the food industry because I worked previously at um, a cafe. But when I couldn't find anything, I started applying more to everything. I started applying to like stocking shelves. I started applying to a little bit of retail, a couple of cleaning jobs, just like whatever was in the area that I could find. It's definitely been a little frustrating. I maybe got back one reply saying that they were hired for now and the rest is kind of like, When they are not interested, they don't respond at all. I've been looking for a job, one, because I want to start um, saving for my future. I want to start saving for post-secondary to just gain experience, to gain some responsibility, to gain a sort of routine. And I also just want to be able to, like, go out with my friends and buy food or go and buy some clothes if I want sometimes. I just want to have some money that I can spend on myself as well. Canada's youth are facing the toughest summer job market in years. Statistics Canada shows that unemployment rates among youth aged 15 to 24, they're at their highest since 2014, excluding the pandemic years. For young Canadians, it means longer job searches or no job at all. Carrie Freestone is an economist with the Royal Bank of Canada. She co-authored a report earlier this year that looked at youth unemployment. Carrie, hello. Hey, how's it going? Going well. Uh, Why is it so hard, though, for young people right now to find work? Well, I mean, there's a few reasons. So in general, right now, it's definitely a a cooler labor market situation. And, you know, if I'm being blunt, it's, it's a pretty challenging environment right now. I can tell you that youth under the age of 25 account for one third of job seekers out there right now. And that's definitely disproportionate because that age group only accounts for 20% of the labor force. And if we look back to 2022, so over the past two years, we've had a pretty sizable number of young people joining the labor market, meaning they're looking for work. And of those people who've joined, only about a third have been able to secure work. So two thirds, you know, are still in out there looking. Um, I will say, you know, the rise in youth unemployment that you mentioned, that stat can number, it's almost entirely a story of job hunting challenges rather than outright layoffs. And this is kind of unique because in a typical labor market correction like we're in right now, layoffs often drive the increase in unemployment. Um, But, you know, what we've seen right now, even though we're not currently in a recession, the unemployment rate has risen pretty drastically. And so many companies are saying, "Okay, we're not going to fire anyone, but we're certainly not hiring new people. And unfortunately, you know, the people bearing the brunt of this are are young people. And the the youth unemployment rate, about 13.5 percent right now. So but, but you said something interesting. You said it's a job hunting problem. Explain that. Yeah. So, I mean, if we look at times where the unemployment has risen historically, a lot of times it's driven by layoffs. But right now, you know, we are seeing layoffs ticking up, but it's very much a story. What's driving the unemployment rate is people entering the labor market looking for work who aren't able to find it. And a lot of those people are, you know, students, be it post-secondary students looking for a summer job, teenagers looking for summer work experience, or even, you know, people who graduated with their college diploma or university degree and they're entering the labor market and they're not able to find work because, you know, business sector activity is softer than it was in the immediate aftermath of the pandemic. Households are feeling stretched. People are spending less and, you know, companies are scaling back. You uh, and and you, you just mentioned the new graduates. I mean, who who have that paper in their hand and they're not having any luck. Is is it any different for them? I would say they're facing similar challenges right now as well, um, because you know. So I will say, young people that are are looking for part time work or summer jobs. These are groups that tend to be typically impacted because you know when labor markets are soft. Um, And when households aren't spending a lot, we usually see slow hiring in sectors like food service, 
um, hotels, retail sector, that's standard. But also right now, we're seeing a scaling back in hiring and finance and tech. These sectors hired a lot during the pandemic, huge numbers of hires, and now they've really scaled back. And these are sectors that people with, you know, post-secondary education graduate and tend to want to move into. And unfortunately, there's just not as many jobs out there right now. Actually, uh, the company Indeed, the hiring company, um, had a data point that I found interesting that showed that job postings are down 42% um, hmm. over the past few years. So it's definitely, it's the data speaks to what's happening out there. You mentioned those those summer jobs that typically employ young people, whether it's restaurants or retail. We heard at the top there, high school student Diego Quadra talk about, he's not even getting callbacks from, from, from restaurants or retail, all cleaning, all kinds of jobs. Who's in those jobs right now if, if it's not students and it's not young folks? That's a great question. Um, so, I mean, it, it's probably, you know, maybe people who are overqualified from other positions who aren't able to find work, um, you know, people with who've been working in that sector before. So I think what's happening right now is that we're not seeing an expansion of positions opening up in those industries. So people have been working in those industries for a while are still kind of sitting there. Um, but there's, you know, it, it's, it's not students that are occupying those positions this summer. In your report, uh, you write that that it's it's youth rather than new arrivals to Canada that have, that have been driving the increase in unemployment. How, how does that compare, uh, unemployment for youth compared to new arrivals? Great question. So actually, you know, so I, I can't comment on um, specific temporary residents, but I can look at immigrants um, who've, you know, who've gotten permanent residency. And I can see that their unemployment rates are actually in many cases lower um, than young people. So youth unemployment is typically higher. That's something that we usually see when the unemployment rate rises. Um, but there's been this question out there, obviously, because Canada's population has grown pretty drastically over the past few years, whether it's newcomers that are being impacted. And right now we're seeing that it, it very much is youth and, and not necessarily a story of immigration. You could hear in those two youth we interviewed, uh, you know, the discouragement, the frustration. So so surely there is a, an impact on young people. And we're going to speak uh, with someone about that and our next guest. But but tell me, what are the, what are the broader implications for for the for the Canada's economy, when when young folks, new grads, can't get work. Well, I mean, over the long run, you know, it is a challenge for these specific groups. But I will say, uh, everything ebbs and flows, and we go through periods of time where the unemployment is higher, and it is challenging for people to seek work. That doesn't mean that this is going to be, you know, a permanent phenomenon. We think that the unemployment rate is going to start to fall into next year. Um, as, you know, consumer confidence improves. Because right now we're in a situation where households are feeling very stretched. Um, you know, many households have renewed mortgages at higher rates. We've also come off of a period of time where prices have increased pretty drastically. And so that means that consumer purchasing power is pretty weak. People aren't spending, companies aren't hiring. But as the Bank of Canada starts cutting interest rates, people with, you know, those, those variable rate mortgages and people with credit card debt will immediately feel some relief. And we expect next summer things will be better for students. So I do want to emphasize this isn't a permanent trend, though it can be discouraging for students, especially, you know, in a situation where they want to move forward and save money. That's a pretty frustrating thing for a 16-year-old to hear right now. And certainly for a 21, 23-year-old who is, you know, put out 20, 10, 20, 30 job applications. So you have looked at these numbers, you're looking at at the the data right now, what would you tell a young person that's that's looking for for a job? I would say don't give up. You know, you're not alone. It's definitely a challenging environment, but but keep looking and uh, you know don't think that this is going to be permanent. This is unfortunately uh, a function of the labor market as it is right now, um, but we do expect things to improve in the near term. So keep up hope and keep looking. Hang in there. All right, Carrie Freestone, thank you for your analysis on this. Thanks for having me. Carrie Freestone is an economist with the Royal Bank of Canada. A summer job is often a first job. Rebecca Raby is a sociology professor at Brock University in St. Catharines, Ontario. She led a study that looked at young people's perceptions and experiences of early work and the skills they gain. Rebecca, hello. Hi, Duncan. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, tell me, why, why do you want to look at young people and, and their experiences of early work? 
Well, there's a lot of um, research that goes into education and young people's experiences in school. Um, and I was really interested in this area that maybe doesn't get quite as much attention for, you know, what are their experiences of early work? What do they learn there? Um, I also, like probably many of your listeners, had, you know, very, you know, early jobs that shaped me. And so I was interested in learning about how that's working today. I remember my first job uh, was as a stock boy, uh, and I was so nervous uh, trying to get that job, so grateful when I did get it. Um, you mm -hmm. talked to teens under 16 about their early work experiences. What did you learn? Um, I learned that... Um they're very important, <laughs> that those experiences are very important to those young people. Um, but there's also a line, right? So there's certain kinds of jobs that can be really great um, for their learning, for their skill development, for their confidence. Um, and then there's a certain kind of job that's maybe not, or or certain things can happen in that job that make it not quite as positive as, a, as an experience. So um, if we're going to foster jobs, like early jobs for young people, I think we have to really think about making sure they're the kinds of jobs that are positive for them. Uh, I want to get to the benefits, although they may seem mm -hmm. obvious to some, but but there's there's kind of that, yeah. that myth of the, the bad first job. Do, 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 right. do, is that is it a good learning experience to have a, a rotten first job? <laughs> a rotten first job. Um, I would say that most of the people I talked to did not have a rotten first job. But like any kind of life experience, there's multiple components to it, right? And some of them, parts of it are not so great, and some of them are... Are better. So a lot of my participants would talk about um, some great things, right? You know, it was really exciting to earn some money, for instance, and often they had really good relationships with coworkers. Um, sometimes they would talk about uh, skills that they'd learned and feeling really great about that. And then they would also sometimes talk about specific encounters, um, like with a customer, for example, that, that was more difficult for them. And you learn from that as well. And there's so much learning that goes on. Uh, we're, we're talking about it being a dry summer for a lot of teenagers right now uh, and 20-somethings. So, so what are we losing uh, if they can't find those jobs, mm -hmm. if they can't get those, those, whether they're soft or hard skills? Right. So soft skills, people skills, um, how to interact with others, how to, I mean, even apply for a job to... Um, you know, interact differently uh, potentially with your coworkers versus, say, um, customers versus your boss um, to, uh, you know, have to plan your timetable to get to work at the right time. Um, you know, the concrete skills that are related to whatever specific job they're working at. Um, my participants talked to me a lot about money management skills that they were sort of developing and sort of really thinking about what they're going to do with the money that they're earning. Um, all of those kinds of things. Um, and, you know, some of the things that one of your earlier, I think Diego was talking about, you know, the, the sort of responsibility and routine as well, right? Feeling, you know, and, and some of them feeling really good about themselves in our, you know, we, we value work and to be able to go to work and earn money and to um, participate in, in that part of life has allowed a lot of young people to feel really positive about themselves. Carrie Freestone mentioned that, that the industries that, that typically employ young people are, are restaurants, retail. What kind of jobs were, did you find that, that students were and, and young people were taking? Right. So one of the things I was interested in was, um, was the very earliest jobs that young people do. And so um, a lot of them were things that happened before before they were 15 and um, included, you know, things like being an umpire or a referee, being a babysitter, delivering newspapers, shoveling snow for a neighbor. So I included all of those kinds of work as well as, you know, the kinds of work that we've just been talking about in the service industry, especially. So a huge breadth of kinds of work that they were doing. Uh, I talked about my first job. I'm also uh, a dad, and so I'm, I'm wrestling with right. with with a, having a young man at home who's who's struggling himself mm -hmm. uh, in in terms of his own job hunt. So, what role do parents play here? Very significant role. Um, I've I've learned a lot about how how um, supportive parents. Uh, can and are can be and are in relationship to you know, helping their young person get work, helping them navigate work, including navigating difficult work and making decisions sometimes to leave a job if things aren't going very well or don't feel safe there. So um, 
that's also a really important component. Um, of course, not all young people have that kind of guidance, but I'd say that most young people's entry into work is very much scaffolded by their parents. Is there a point, uh, you know, where, where a parent should just ease off and say, hey, uh, you know, it's okay to just take some downtime from school? Absolutely. Oh, to de- sorry, take some downtime from school? From, or from school work. or work, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have this one one participant, for example. I mean, he was happy to have work. Um, it was great talking to him. He One of the things he was really excited about in terms of earning money was being able to, um, you know, like, like take a friend out to a movie, for example. And he um, had a job in like a burger place. And, you know, they were making demands of him that were having him work later and later, and it was impacting on his school. And so he was explaining how one of the first things he did was he talked to his mom about this and what should he do. And, you know, because that that family situation, like economically, they could they didn't require him to work, and um, and they made the decision together that he would end that job because of the situation there. Yeah, and and really interesting. I mean, what kind of protections are there for for youth on the job? Well, um, there's, I mean, there are labor laws, right? Mm-hmm. They vary across provinces in, in terms of exactly what they look like. Um, but there, there are all sorts of labor laws that protect young people at work. Um, and also, but, but at the same time, um, I would say that one of the things that concerns me when we're talking about unemployment right now is that if, um, if young people feel that there's not very many jobs available and they have to really strive to, you know, get and hang on to a job that they may um, take greater risks, be less likely to leave a, lo- a job that's that's exploitive or dangerous. Um, that it may feel like more that they may feel more that they have to commit to that job. One of the things that we did in our research was we would offer these scenarios for <laughs> for the for the young people to talk about. Um, you know, what if this happened or what if that happened and. You know, one of them was about a safe, a danger at work situation. And, you know, for a lot of them, it was like, well, I would leave that job. So I worry that um, that might be less likely if things feel tight. And talking with teenagers, uh, not always the easiest thing to do. What, what should uh, parents look out for to make sure uh, if, there, if there are any red flags to make sure a job is safe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think being in regular contact with them, ask if they've gotten some kind of safety training, um, you know, asking how their day was. And if they talk about certain tasks to say, oh, how exactly did you do that task? Um, I think it's really difficult because (laughs) depending on your teen and and where they're at, um, they may, you know, really want to be sort of independently doing their job and not sort of talking about it too much. But I do think there's great value in communicating about it, right, and finding out what's going on. And and talk about talking about independence. I mean, we all know uh, how great it feels to have a little bit of extra change in your pocket when when you're young. Uh, what are the long term effects if if they're not starting to earn money early? Yeah, well, that's definitely something of concern as well because um, you know we know that it's important to build a resume. And some of our, our very early workers, that was a really fueling them was you know wanting to build the skills for sort of future work and sort of seeing themselves you know, start maybe with something like paper delivery and then move into working, you know, in uh, like fast food and then moving into retail. Like they had this whole sort of trajectory, right? And then into, you know, university and so forth. And so if we cut that off earlier, if if those early skills can't be developed, that confidence, um, especially for uh, more marginalized young people, um, I, I sort of worry that it's going to affect them later on down the line and and especially the conversation we were just hearing about young people feeling so discouraged and frustrated um, in contrast to sort of those feelings of confidence right and responsibility that can come with that early work um, that discouragement and frustration I can imagine could hold on for a while or be hard to overcome and I ask Carrie this question I'm going to close off with asking you the same Mm -hmm. one I mean if if there's a young person listening right now looking for a job what advice would you give them oh that's a good question um you know we're we're I think it's important for young people to look at the skills that they have I think sometimes it's easy to to see oneself as not having skills because of not having a lot of time in the work in the workforce but to actually um to, to see skills in themselves and to include when they're thinking about those skills, any kind of um, 
work that they may have done that's not as likely to be uh, formally recognized, right? So if they have done babysitting or snow shoveling, to be able to use those people as references um, and to um, identify skills that they've gained from those kinds of things, I, 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 um, I think might help them, not just in terms of getting a job, but feeling sort of confident in pursuing them. And of course, Having to stick at it, it seems to be a, a big part of the equation right now. Absolutely. Good tip on working on the resume. Rebecca, thank you for your expertise on this. You're welcome. Thanks. Rebecca Raby is a sociology professor in the Department of Child and Youth Studies at Brock University in St. Catharines, Ontario. And we want to hear from you. Are, are you a young person trying to find a job or a parent who's trying to help out, uh, can't find work right now? Tell us about your experience, The current at cbc.ca.